What's good, Raven Flock? We got a nail biter coming. And the news is not even getting good. I'm putting hogs on the mob, planting purple seeds. Baltimore Ravens coat. Purple trim, big body, old school for low. Purple rim, seven, seven, cutty. Wow, man. So, oof, this, where, where do I start, really? Where do I start? So, Ronnie Stanley is out. Um, He's going to miss some time. I guess he wasn't fully healed as of yet from the injury last year. So, uh, Alejandro Villaweiga is going to move to left tackle. I forgot who they said is going to be at the right tackle, but I'm like, okay, Alejandro's natural position was left tackle, so... Hopefully he can do better. I doubt it. Hopefully he can do better than what he did with the Raiders because that was a massacre. And then they um, took Freeman off the practice squad and made him on an active squad. So I'm like, okay, I was hoping Bell because Bell is much great blocker and Freeman is a good receiver, but to me, Bell has is, is better than Freeman for as a receiver catching in the backfield. That's my opinion. Um, but then, you know, they said Bell got to get more in football shape, so that's why I said in a video a while back that I feel like he's going to get the Dez Bryant treatment, but hopefully they use him more than what they did with Dez Bryant. Um, it's just, ah, oh, man. It's like so much going on with the Ravens organization, and we only just passed week one going into week two. Sunday night football, it's the Chiefs. I'm talking about the Chiefs. It is some things I'm looking forward to. Um, Owe versus Orlando Brown. Um, Justin Houston versus Orlando Brown. That's going to be, to me, interesting because Orlando Brown did have a bad week last week. And he said, you know, he's going to play better. And I'm like, you're going against your old team. So that's even more pressure because you know our eyes are going to be on you. You wanted to be that left tackle, and you got your wish. Now you finna play. You are, you played bad one week. Now you finna play your old team. And your old team will know all your weaknesses, your tendencies, everything such as that. And OA, the person that was drafted um, with that 31st pick that we received, uh, from Kansas City with Orlando Brown. He actually, too, in my opinion, he did very, very good last week. With the limited snaps that he did have, but he was bringing the pressure very fast. He already proved the doubters with, uh, oh, he don't have no sacks in college. First game, he gets a sack. And you know what the old saying is, once you get that one sack out the way, and you're young and you're a rookie, it just continually builds. And I'm like, he he already shadows Houston. We still haven't even seen Hayes, because Hayes was limited participation. He didn't even play in the game. Then we still have being Cleveland on the offensive line. It's just, oh my goodness, it's so much. It is just so much. But that's what I'm looking forward to in the... Kansas City as well. I'm looking forward to our coverage. Defense. I'm going to get on the offense in a minute, but our defense coverage. Because you've seen Darren Waller get like 40 passes thrown to him. I'm exaggerating. But you know, you know, for those who saw the game and saw the stats, that was ridiculous. And they still couldn't stop him. 
violence, no push on the line, no one was uh, like pressing him to get that communication off. And we got to do that with Kelsey. We have to do that with Kelsey. I don't know who that other dude was for the Raiders, number 10. They wasn't press, pressing him to slow that slow that, that timing down. You know you got to do that with Tyreek Hill. That's just a gimme. You have to press him. Take that chance. No cover. I We should not see cover zero. Just rush the fort. When they did rush the fort, in my opinion, with the Raiders, they were bringing pressure, and Houston almost got a sack on one of them. But then he backs up and do cover zero like a billion times. You go against, you go cover zero with Pat Mahomes and all of them weapons he has. Oh, they could score like forty. In the first half. So the coaching. With saying that. Defense coaching. Got to step it up. Got to, Wink has to step it up. And that moves me to the offense. Offense coaching. We already know this story. We know. I, like I, I'm done. I'm done with Greg Roman. I'm done with believing anything he says. I am completely done. Let's see Keith Williams and T. Martin get upgraded. I'm done. After this game, I'm done with this dude. He continually lies, and Harps continually let him lie. EDC might have to step in and be like, okay, Harps, yes, you're a good players coach, but you got to do something about this offensive dude. Wink fluffed up. And he, he, like, they didn't want to really admit it, but he fluffed up. But he don't have that, uh, inc- that consistency of messing up like Greg Roman. Greg Roman been continually, he, we had that one good season with 14 and 2. And he's been just riding that. That was two years ago. Terrible last year. And you already starting the season off. I know it's just one game, but it's Greg Roman. Offense coordinator been cut multiple times, San Francisco. Um, the Bills. And the Bills went to the playoffs and they cut them the next year, I believe. So that tells you. The man is, is good for one year. My cousin told me that a while back, and he's a Frisco fan. He's like, bro going to have one good year, then you got to cut him. We still haven't cut him. Bills had one good year. San Francisco had one good year with him. He was offense coordinator when the Ravens beat him in the Super Bowl. One good year. So, it's just so much so much going on and we are, we still at the beginning. That's that's the scary part. We are still at the beginning. Seeing Greg Roman, seeing Alejandro getting beat up. I think they only showed that I can remember one play where he kind of sent some help over there with him. So he should have sent he should have sent some type of help because he's seen. We're going to wave a getting just tortured. Ronnie Stanley had nine pressures, but you see now Ronnie Stanley is out. He's not. I knew he wasn't going to be 100%, always coming from an injury. Never expect that, but now we just don't know. We just don't know when he will come back. Hopefully he will come back sometime this year when he's getting the critical. Um, they could be just making sure the play is safe. Um, but he didn't do no adjustments and it's been multiple, multiple times when we see no adjustments from this man and it's like really gets tiring. You see him continually like blitzing like crazy 
Lamar, they and he didn't make no adjustments to help out Lamar. And Lamar is such a phenomenal player, but you can only do so much. It's like Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. You can only do he could only do so much with what was going on with the line. And then they put out the stats that Lamar actually got pressured more than I believe it was like Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl was like 54 or something like that. And Lamar Monday Night Football was like 57. That's that's ridiculous. That's literally no time. But you saw the little bit of time he had. Hollywood. Uh, Watkins. You saw you saw the big plays. You saw the plays happening when he had just a little bit of time. There's no reason he should have had 12 carries running for his life. And it's just like, oh my goodness. And I know I see it's just the first game, but it's 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 more than that. To me, it's more than that. Lamar had the fumbles and everything. Lamar would fix that. I'm not even worried about that. But you see what he was going through is really not shocking. It was like, dude, no help. No adjustments from Greg Roman. Do some quick passes or something. That's what the Squillers did last year with that terrible offensive line. They were doing them quick passes. Get them out of there. But uh, it's going to be interesting. Then we have to look at the Chiefs defense. Finoeva got done in. I cannot remember who they said going to be moving to the right, the right tackle, but it's like uh, Chris Jones. He's going to be a problem. I believe he already had two sacks for the season. I believe. So you can only imagine what he's going to do to Venoeva. He's probably he probably like, oh my God, I'm going to torture this dude. I'm going to have like about three sacks in one game. Have five in the season already. And I'm only in week two. He's one of the best on the line other than, you know, Aaron Donald, give me, but he's like second best, I believe. So Greg Roman has to step it up and it's ridiculous. I said this in a tweet. I believe I said in another video, Ravens lose this. I would. I just be like, you know what? I'm done. Greg Roman, go. Keith Williams. T. Martin, you're you're both you're both uh, getting a promotion. Let's 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 get this nick this in the bud as the season is still early, so we can get these cobwebs out the way and we can just go. So when we shot Bateman and everything comes back, we are already on the jail. As the, as our running backs continually learn the system, we are already we are already going. We are already going. As EDC trying to fix his offensive line as well, with the little cap he has, let's, let's just go. We have we have no time to waste. None whatsoever. Cause the Chiefs, they gave away a lot of big runs. Like Chubb and Hunt was cooking. I was watching that game. I was like, the Browns are finna win this. And then, you know, Baker Mayfield did his thing and gave the game away. But I'm like, the Browns is running on all on these dudes. And we know that's a Raven specialty. And that's what I was thinking before I made this video. I'm like, they know the Ravens going to run. We got to do some type of scheming or something to get that run going. And they and also the Chiefs gave away some big passes. 
But look at our offensive line. Will he have time to get down that field so he can throw it? Because some of the passes was there when he had the time. He overthrew up maybe one or two. I believe. Dev. Mark Andrews. That's the only two I can think of. But that's when he had a little time. But when he did have that time, Hollywood and Watkins, like I said, beautiful plays. Caught up. Caught it in stride, too. Didn't have to slow down or anything like that. Beautiful. But then, I'm like, okay, there's a chance we can run on these guys. And what do Greg Roman say in the press conference today? I understand Tyson Williams uh, was doing good, but this is pretty much what did I want. I want to, matter of fact, let me get the correct saying because it was very very stupid. He said, Tyson Williams decreased snaps in the second half. We're not going to put one back in there and play him the whole game. Those days are over. We're going to rotate guys in and out and keep them as fresh as we can. How can you rotate a guy that is Hot and in your quote rotate only two carries in the second half. What are you rotating? It literally feels like you forgot he was there after you praised him earlier in the week. Okay, you want to give Murray his his carries? Okay, you can still. But when you see this guy's hot, come on, keep it going, keep it going. Give him two plays. Man, he's still cooking. Okay, give him another. He's still cooking. Okay, give him another. All right, you need a little breather? Murray, go out there. Good for your breather? Get back out there. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. That's rotating. And when he said that, I was like, those days are over? That's the first thing I... I'm like, those days are over. Your days should have been over. But Harbs is not going to do that. I like Harbs. He has had some questionable, questionable coaching incidents. But he has to be hard on his coaches. You see the players like Harbs. When the wired and all of that, they was there for Harbs and everything. Harbs was down with the JK and all of this stuff. And I'm like, Harbs, you have Keith Williams and T. Martin. You see how the wide receivers are already playing better than they were when the virus was here? Think about what Lamar could do when you get rid of this virus, Greg Roman. We could see a brighter day for Lamar. It's too much pressure on this man. Because you constantly want him to do miracles. And it's like, what else can Lamar do other than just be spectacular? And it's like ridiculous. And everybody knows it. Even the media out, and I don't even agree with a lot of the media outlets, but when majority of the media outlets are saying the exact same thing as some of the players were, some of the ex players were, how many signs do you need? This one guy. Could be stopping the potential of your star franchise quarterback. And you continually be stubborn. It's on a whole nother level. And it's sad and it's pitiful actually. This is a business. 
Everybody has one goal in mind. That's the Lombardi. And you see... And you see the inconsistencies. As Harv himself has had inconsistencies. But sometimes you just gotta... You know what? I'm done, man. I'm, I'm tired of your lies. You're holding us back. We had a 14 point lead. There's no reason we should have gave that up. Lamar fumbled twice, I believe. Or three times and lost two. And I can remember one right off the back was... One was Tyson Wings missed a, a block. I'm like, okay. Fine. But then one was on the run because the pocket broke down. Because Vanna Wave was continually getting cooked. No adjustments. Then you see Tyson Williams was cooking him. He just he, he not too long ago did a fourth and one touchdown and he put Murray out there for a fourth and one yes it was a miss block on the offensive line but still Tyson Williams has a faster burst than Murray which is still learning the offense if you go back and look at that Tyson Williams play it was one big hole to the right which he seen a linebacker over there he stepped over there Made the linebacker shift over there. Then he cut to the smaller hole. And took it to the house. Murray what is going to be able to do that right away. He still. What they signed him what Friday. You can't. Like I said. You can't make this stuff up. I. And it's just surprising to me. But hopefully they can fix that. And we, the Ravens can get a shocker. Get a shocker and they can actually win. All respect to the Raiders. I didn't. That was a really great game. Very crazy. A lot of questionable calls. But a lot of questionable calls on both sides. But one of the main questionable calls was that when the offensive lineman jumped and they didn't call it when they were kicking that 55 yard field goal, which would have made it a 60 yard field goal. But that's another day. And it was their home opener, Las Vegas. But still. As I say, I don't believe the offense will improve with Greg Roman. So I'm not going to put my hopes up. I'm just tell y'all straight up. I have the Ravens losing this. I'm going. I am, I'm not even going to give a score because I don't know how many cover zeros Wiggins is going to do. But I have them losing. It. Starting the season 0-2. And to me, that should be enough to let Greg Roman go, promote Keith Williams, promote T. Martin, and let's get this train going. So y'all tell me what y'all think. My apologies, the video is so long. I, I don't think I ever did a video this long. But anyway, everybody stay safe. Tell me in the comments what you think. Hey, if you want to put your score prediction in the comments, let's see. But and also, before I end the video, the people that came by yesterday with my uh, Pokemon cards opening, thank you all for coming by. It's real fun. We got the football coming up. We got the football cards coming up and the basketball cards. So, um, hit that notification. Hopefully, the stream don't go crazy like it did yesterday. But everybody stay safe. God bless.